Hi, my name is Stephen Paul, and this exhibition, Illusions, at La Salle du Cercle in Seyon, is being presented by the Beddington Gallery and the village of Seyon. There are about 50 canvases in the exhibition, although some are panels in larger works. I began the earliest painting in 2010, and the most recent was probably still wet at the opening of the exhibition in early July 2019. The paintings are not hung in any particular order. As beautiful a space as La Salle du Cercle is, it is very difficult when it comes to deciding where pieces should go. For that reason, the work is not chronological. However, in describing the paintings, I will work from the oldest piece to the most recent. After visiting La Salle du Cercle, I was inspired to make a piece that followed the outline of the large arched wall at the head of the space, and to try to create the illusion of a stained glass window. It is from this painting that I got the title of the exhibition, Illusions. The earliest painting was The Crossing. In 2010, I moved to the south of France from Brooklyn, where I had been working on large-scale pieces at Mad Art Studios and exhibiting at Jacobetti Pole and other local galleries. Many of the canvases were six square meters or more, so it was ideal that my first exhibition opportunity after arriving in France was a large format show. The crossing was accepted and eventually won the Prix de Jury in spite of it being very different and four times bigger than the next largest. But regardless of how alien my painting seemed, my hosts, the Seroptimus Club, and later the administration in the town of Antibes, where I was offered a small villa overlooking the Mediterranean for three months, immediately after this exhibition, could not have been more welcoming. But while that first success felt pretty positive, for the following five years, I failed to find an audience. I continued to work on abstract techniques for the next two years, but nothing was connecting. It was clear that the aesthetic language here would be as hard for me to adapt to as it would be to learn French. One afternoon I was working on a one meter square abstracted landscape when I fumbled to a halt and sat down in an armchair, hopelessly looking at the canvas. It wasn't that I was unhappy with the painting, it was as good as finished and I was very happy with the result. The problem was that my very activity as an artist had become meaningless. I was connecting with no one. The painting would be another expression of what I had hoped would represent some universal experience of being alive at this moment, in these surroundings, feeling these things. But I knew that that painting was destined to be another that would be stacked against a wall without even the possibility of provoking a response. It was at this moment that I suddenly felt the urge to paint a realistically rendered foot on top of the abstract landscape. I didn't know why at the time, but I felt that I had nothing to lose. I later named this painting, I Was Here, after realizing that the inspiration to add the foot was a reaction to having become invisible. As evidence that I had, at least at one time, been here, I was leaving body parts along the way. I Was Here was chosen for the online American abstract collection by Saatchi Gallery. In New York, I had never questioned or even considered my relationship with the audience. I took them for granted and assumed that wherever a painting could lead me, I would find a critical audience that would at least share a common aesthetic. I had been honing my techniques in this culture, and regardless of whether I was expressing my interpretations poetically or simply blurting them out like a doddering drunk, I knew that there would be a response that would inspire a discussion and that ultimately I would learn something from it. But all the lines had been cut, and this new existence, far away from my culture and in a language that I did not speak, took quite a while to get used to. The Crossing is like a visual diary of my first years in Provence, not just in what it represents now, but also in the changes that it has gone through. What began as a very Brooklyn painting over the course of nine years became something quite different. Loss, uncomfortable and clumsy adjustments, and reassessments of almost everything. Having lost the faith that these abstract paintings would translate clearly into anything that might convey what I intended to share, I had begun to resort to quite literal references to the art world, nature, stimulants, depressants, love, and the loss of control and of meaning.
In the final version of this painting, my head is rolling through a life that is beyond my control. The span of the painting represents a lifetime, and the head has covered about two-thirds of the distance. The pigeons are time that pass through and continue beyond this moment. The torn note refers to an all-consuming love that had seemed like everything at the time, but that had also slipped into insignificance. In one of its later versions, it returned to the same grand format exhibition. It again was awarded the Prix de Jury in 2018. I Was Here became a series of abstracted landscapes that featured realistically rendered body parts, although only one, the original, is featured in this exhibition. The opportunity to symbolically express the lack of importance I was feeling in this new life was not the only enticement to continue adding realistically rendered elements to the paintings. I also began to enjoy the vibrancy that was generated between the contrast of the two techniques. And then, when adding the tiny birds, I began to work with the weight of sentimentality as a compositional element. The abstractions, while only vaguely referring to real elements, would create far more opportunities to convey an emotion than the obvious depiction of a bird. But the direct appeal to sentiment that the bird image created had the potential to accentuate the abstract by comparison. In almost every painting in the exhibition, at some point I have used an abrasive disc to grind back through some of the layers of paint and from time to time through the canvas itself. This process creates so many random textures and patterns that it is one of the most effective ways that I have found of suggesting the limitless variety of nature. In two of the recent paintings in particular, The Worst is Over, Part 1, and The Trail of Jewels, I have tried to isolate and focus on some of the patterns that this abrasive technique has generated, and by enhancing some of these moments, the canvas begins to take on a composition reminiscent of the paintings of Miro, which I find very enticing and which I hope to continue to explore. The Human Stain was another painting that I began at the Villa Fontaine residency in Antibes in 2011. Originally, it was a depiction of a storm on the Mediterranean that was raging just outside the studio window. Before leaving the villa, I hung the piece on the side of the building and took some photographs with my son. Antibes has a beautiful coastline with a dramatic storm wall. Some years later, after seeing images of the garbage-strewn seabed in Cannes, which is just down the coast road from Antibes, I reworked the image to suggest that the spectacular beauty of the coastline by its an ugly stain of human activity. This also suggested the title for the exhibition. There are five paintings in the exhibition that are standalone abstracts and speak for themselves, but Souvenir, to remember in French, had originally been one of the I Was Here series and had been an image of an arm reaching out of a pot. Sunrise, the red trees, the snowscape, and by the pool are straight abstracts that allude to traditional landscapes, working with light and shape and a horizon in all but with each image growing naturally from the reaction to the development of lines and colors, having all landscapes as inspiration, rather than one in particular. The centerpiece of the show is the 40-panel painting titled Glass, as in stained glass. When I began to work on it, I already had four paintings that I incorporated into the larger work. I was curious to see what effect putting all of these bright abstract patterns together would create. I knew that all those colors together would get to a point where the piece was saturated. My goal was to create a painting that was too bright and busy to be considered, to be taken in. No thoughts of size, style, texture, history, comparison, just an enormous plane that would inspire in the audience the sensation of standing in nature. Too many details to contemplate and too many shades and hues to sense individually. My goal was to create something that had too much to take in, that not only mimicked nature in its randomness, 
a quality that I have been trying to capture since I began painting landscapes, but also in its infinite variety. I'd like to thank Michel and Guy Beddington, Monsieur Le Maire de Sillon, René Hugo, the adjoint de la Culture, Monsieur Serge Leibowitz, and Per Hansen from Blue Dog Litho for his help during the installation. Uh, illusions closed at the end of August in 2019, and due to the virus in 2020, all exhibition opportunities are cancelled. But as soon as it is safe, I hope to exhibit a new series of paintings called Software. This will be a series of animal portraits that I'm hoping will inspire in an audience the need to reconsider our relationship with nature, the environment, and the animal kingdom. This series will consist of about 30 paintings, some of which will measure as high as 25 feet. And thank you to everyone that came out to see the exhibition.